Hi, I'm Susan Kellner from the Ontario Pesticide Education Program and I'm going to go through Chapter 5 in the Grower Pesticide Safety Course Manual, Chapter 5, Pesticide Formulations. Alright, let's get started. And I'll just move myself out of the way. What will I learn? By the end of this lesson you will be ready to list the advantages and disadvantages of using different formulations, define active ingredient, define inert ingredient, Recognize common abbreviations for formulations, define an adjuvant, take mixed pesticides properly and legally. What is a formulation? All right, know that there are three main types. It comes as a solid, a liquid, or a gas. Formulation contains active ingredients, the chemical that controls the pest, and inert ingredients, the chemicals that maintain the active ingredient, examples talc or oils and some active ingredients may be toxic themselves. So we have in the book uh, two uh, pages of charts, a summary of the formulation types of liquids, uh, solids, and gases, and at the bottom there are live organisms. I'm not gonna go over all that for you, but they are there in your book to refer back to. We have a description of the liquid or solid or gas, advantages, disadvantages, and a typical use of that kind of product. Okay, common abbreviations for formulations. Here they are, uh, we've got a list of them. So some of those are used next to a name. So if you have um, a product called Pest Manager EC, that would be a Pest Manager Emulsifile Concentrate. So that trade name on the label is giving you an indication of what kind of material you're actually dealing with when you buy that product. Okay, choosing a formulation. When is uh, pest most easily controlled. That might make a difference with what you're going to use. Could the crop be injured at any of its growth stages with a particular type of formulation? Uh, what equipment will you need? Are you going to have to use new nozzles with this particular type of formulation to reduce drift? Are there health hazards? Um, some um, Formulations, uh, different protective clothing equipment might be worn, whether it's a solid or a liquid, uh, fumigant gas, um, or I mean a fumigant. And what are the optimum weather conditions for the time of application, um, temperatures to avoid. So there's lots of things when uh, looking for a pesticide and choosing um, that product. Now pesticides can have the same trade name but be sold as different products with different formulation types. So an example is the herbicide um, Devernal 10G, Devernal 2G, or Devernal DFXT. So all indicating different formulation types and different active ingredients. Um, just pay attention there because um, for example, this herbicide, Callisto 480SC, has one active ingredient, and Callisto GT has two active ingredients, and that gives you the clue in the name with the GT. So again, um, look closely so you know what you're dealing with. Each formulation has its own registration number, so um, if someone has an accident, give the correct registration to the medical staff. Sometimes the name can be confusing if you just told um, the medical staff that it was Callisto, they wouldn't know which product it was and which of course makes a difference with the active ingredients sometimes. Okay, what is an adjuvant? An adjuvant is any substance added to the product to make it more effective. It could be added to the spray tank or included in the formulation. So examples of adjuvants, so knowing, knowing that what that word is, adjuvants, they are the wetting agents, spreaders, stickers, drift retardants, thickeners, anti-foaming agents, buffers, things that you would add to the spray tank, hopefully to make the product more effective. And when should you use an adjuvant? Read the pesticide label. The label will tell you if you should use an adjuvant, which adjuvants to use, and how much to use. If you use an adjuvant without label directions, and the adjuvant may have no effect and be an unnecessary expense to you, reduce how effective the product is against the pest or actually injure the crop. So be careful with what you add into that product. Now we want to talk a little bit about tank mixes. Right, so you want pesticide one and pesticide two and you're going to read all labels before you mix because you have to 
follow directions on all the pesticide labels using the precautions that give the most protection, that is most restrictive. For example, the largest spray drift buffer zone. You'd have to use the longest restricted entry and pre-harvest intervals. And you would have to wear the most protective clothing and personal protective equipment so to make sure you're protected. So read both all labels. If it's two products, both labels. If it's more than two products, read all the labels before you mix. And a point here at the bottom, slow down the development of pesticide resistance. You would not want to take mix products containing the same active ingredient or a product with the same mode of action unless it specifically lists that you should mix those two products on each of the labels. Okay, each pesticide must be registered for a specific use, timing, and method of use. So the crop and the pest and the timing, um, and whether it's an aerial application, a soil drench, um, the method of use needs to be the same. And look for this product may be tank mix. So that's a clear uh, indication that you're good to go with tank mixing two products together. It's actually on the label that you can use those two products together. Problems with tank mixing, it could result in gelling or curdling in the tank. It could be more toxic to the crop. It could be more toxic to the applicator, that solution, that tank mix you've made. It could reduce pest control, um, antagonistic reaction. It could leave unacceptable pesticide residues on the crop before mixing. Make sure you know that they will work well together. If you mix products that do not have tank mixing directions, you are responsible for what happens. Okay, that's uh, the formulation chapter. Thanks.